So good afternoon everyone. Thank you for coming to my talk. So today I am going to talk about fast with Kata containers. So this is basically about one of the latest emerging technology that is fast function as a service and how are we trying to make it more secure with another very exciting project that is by OpenStack that is called Kata containers. So this work is mostly being done by my colleagues like Mritika and Tegu but they could not come here because of the travel issue, so I'm going to present their work here. So to start with, uh, this is the agenda for my talk. So I'll be briefly discussing about how FAST evolved and what actually FAST is and what is the advantage of using FAST in today's cloud computing domain or telcos and or anywhere. And then I'll talk about the problem statement that we are trying to fix with Carter containers and what is the actual problem that we are trying to solve here? Uh, the next topic is about the solution that is actually the Kata containers and how it is fixing it. And the, then a brief introduction about Kata containers and finally we'll go on to how we could approach running fast with the Kata containers. So let's get started before going into details about the serverless architecture or function as a service. I would like to talk about how the cloud computing architecture has actually developed, uh, emerged throughout the time and we'll see that in the first one uh, which I am talking about is the monolithic architecture. In the monolithic architecture it means we are running everything as a single unit of service. So we have everything running on a bare metal node and we say that it is a single point of failure like let's say anything happens wrong with your application your organization is going to suffer a lot because of monolithic architecture so that's where uh, there was a need of having a multi-tier architecture and that's how our entire application was evolved and uh, we generally run like multiple services we have multiple layer of services and this is mostly a client server architecture and this presents mostly three layers like three layer application which presents the presentation application and the data management so these services are actually more granular than having the monolithic architecture and you have the developers have greater flexibility like let's say for an example something happens wrong with your application server so you just have to fix that part and you don't have to actually change anything on the other tier of your application. So that's how we are gaining agility and flexibility uh, with the monolithic architecture. But as we are running this inside a VM and it takes a lot of resource, uh, there was a need of um, something else that uh, come up as this is now called as the microservices. In microservices, we have like multiple service running and both uh, every service has their own business logic so all the services run inside a container or you could in, even run them inside a vm but uh, to name these technologies we have like infrastructure as a service platform as a service and then the container technologies lxc docker and the rocket one so we run everything inside the containers and with containers it is so easy to pack an application, scale it, uh, like port it to another system. So it has really made a developer's life really easy. But with that, there comes complexity where uh, the application architect has to actually manage the server, the code repository, the load balancer and whatnot. So there is a lot of complexity and it needs a DevOps mature DevOps team to handle that complexity. So that's how the uh, nano services or we call it as serverless architecture or function as a service evolved. And in that we are just running a single piece of code. The developer doesn't need to worry about how their servers are, are going to be launched, how it will scale up. Everything will be handled by the cloud provider, application developer, or even the architect does not have to worry about any underlying details. So that's how cool function as a service is. So now uh, we have seen how uh, the the architecture has evolved from the monolithic architecture to having serverless architecture today. Let's see what function as a service is. So before going into detail about the definition of function as a service, I would like to talk what actually a serverless architecture is. So in a serverless architecture, a developer need not to worry about any of the server details like how their servers are being 
uh, created or spawn or maybe the scalability issues or upgrade or any kind of installation they just need to write single piece of code and it will be managed or uh, by the cloud provider so this is called the serverless architecture now what is fast so fast is a mean of enabling serverless architecture on our cloud uh, platforms so uh, uh, by fast it's a serverless architecture and the developer of course does not need to worry about any of the underlying details they just write the single piece of code upload it to the cloud provider and it will be run it is an even driven uh, function it will be run and the developer could have the output so it really makes life uh, developers life easy and no server provisioning servers are auto scaled and uh, the functions are executed quite fast because it is so granular and it's just a piece of code or a function it runs really fast and you just have to pay for the time you are running your functions on the cloud platform so some of the characteristics to name from my uh, introduction to the fast is it, it is latency tolerant it is event driven and it is short lived and periodic so now uh, this is just an example of a python function the, the source is from the google functions in this example the developer has written a, just a hello world function and uh, the developer can run this function on any of the cloud providers that they have and uh, just have the output this is just a single piece of code where it is running a hello world program so and there are multiple providers for function uh, as a service today like ibm openwhisk and google functions and aws uh, aws lambda so there are multiple providers who are actually working on enabling function as a service on their cloud platforms so now why fast like we have already talked how cool the fast uh, uh, architecture is so these are some of the advantages that we get from enabling fast on our cloud platform so for example higher scale because the co uh, code is granular and we don't have actually to run the servers or manage the servers because it is mostly the servers common service servers being shared by multiple users so uh, you could run multiple like 10x number of functions as compared to the vms uh, with fast and then uh, lower overhead so we could also run like pre allocated vms and containers for running this functions inside the vm or container and if you run this functions inside vm uh, that has a memory overhead of 2 to 4 gb whereas if you run those function inside the container it is a really low overhead that is 128 mb to 3 gb and because the uh, uh, developers or the cloud architecture doesn't have to worry about any of the platform details or any of the server management it really reduces the co scaling cost the development cost and of course there is no need of any operations team for managing the hardware so it also uh, makes operational management really easy so now uh, the problem so what is the problem that we are trying to fix here so as you all know that uh, the docker regular containers are not secure so i'm talking about the dirty cow issue here so in this diagram you could see that we have three containers let's assume that container a b and c are from different customers so um, like if container a is running some malicious code and it it tries to compromise the linux kernel it could uh, gain access to other containers like other services other containers from different users so it is really not safe to just run your function inside the containers so now what is the solution um, i'll just come back to this so now what is the solution how are we going to fix that so what you might already have heard about kata containers or the virtualized containers so what they try to do is they try to run the containers inside a very lightweight vm which has really low memory footprints and which have been actually optimized to boot up not as fast as container but approximately as fast as containers so in this diagram you see that uh, we have a container running inside a vm and then let's say the container a has some buggy code and it is trying to uh, it has compromised the linux kernel so it is only going to compromise the containers kernel not the actual host uh, kernel so that's how your container b and c are secure with using kata containers so now a brief introduction about the kata containers it is a project that is being managed by openstack and 
it is mostly uh, like a collaboration between Intel Clear Container Project and Hyper Runway Technologies. And uh, as I've already told you that they try to run containers inside a very lightweight VM. So you have the speed of uh, containers and the security of VM. So best of both the worlds together. So now let's see, this is the final slide of my presentation. So here we are actually seeing how can we run fu uh, functions inside Kata containers. So today most of the functions are being run on Kubernetes. So Kubernetes on the back end uses the Docker containers, which I've uh, already explained is not as not secured as the virtualized containers. So in the first diagram, you see that we are running the functions inside the Docker container back like uh, on top of Kubernetes, which is not very secure. So what we are going to do is we uh, um, enable Q Kata containers with Kubernetes because you can seamlessly run Kata container today with Kubernetes. So in this uh, in this approach, you have a layer of Kata and then uh, Kubernetes Kata containers. Kata container launches the VM and it runs the VM uh, the function inside that. So you have the security of container uh, security of the VM and the speed of the container. So. This is actually work in progress. So if you have any questions, uh, you could reach me or uh, drop any comment on the re reviews. And also, you could reach me on IRC. So thank you so much.